Now we're inside the garage. Um, what you can hear is the uh, ceiling fan. The reason for that 12 uh, feet ceiling, uh, I need to have the heat to uh, move around so it, otherwise it accumulates towards the ceiling. And this is the furnace I didn't modify. I might publish a video about that. So this is an electric furnace. There's an electric heater inside. I flipped it upside down, which is allowed by the manufacturer. I fit a four inch thick filter uh, because uh, the flow of that and the amount of dust we get in the garage is significant. And the reason for that output being here at the bottom is because there's no point putting heat on the ceiling if that's only to try to get it go down. So I still have the wood furnace. It's, uh, it's very, very powerful. The, I would say it's almost at 200,000 BTUs. Whenever I get very, very, very cold weather outside, I'm using this one along this one to heat up the place. So about this uh, opening, if uh, Tractor Man 44 Wendell is watching me, I'm sorry, this is the best knowledge I've had about uh, tin metal. <laughs> this is the point of entry here. It's uh, one inch and a quarter. And then I have the manifold going left and right. That's not ideal location for that uh, dot indicator because there's no flow in between, but you know, wherever there's flow is going to mix in with the uh, uh, glycol here. So underneath, you, get, you see the valves. So I've got two in, two outs. And one is for that uh, temporary heater. I'm going to reuse this to put in the uh, woodworking workshop. For now, it's been installed there. By the time I do install this one here, So you see the heating coil, 20 by 20, supposed to produce about 80,000 BTUs. And there's no fancy detail here. Only detail here, whenever I need to have it to kick also the electric heater, that's a switch on, that uh, jump from the uh, inside, jumps from the fan to heat, or W1, W2, so I can, have a good amount of heat coming out of that unit. And that unit is controlled from the other side. So this one is for the wood furnace and this one is for the electric heater. You, s you hear the click. And voila. Well, this is it for the garage. Okay, now we're done in the basement. This is the inlet, the manifold, uh, out, uh, out and in, out and in, two extra spare. One is going to the in-house garage, and this one goes to the furnace and the water heater. And by the way, if you don't know this ink bird application, this monitors my glycol temperature inside. Um, there's a, I'm not using the in and out, it's just a function of transmitting the information about the temperature, alarms and all that stuff. Now, this is the furnace, and sorry about the tool chest. So this is the furnace, it's having AC and heat pump in it, electric heating coils, and then I did fit this heating coil. Only difference with the garage, this one has this three-way valve. So glycol is coming in from down under and the position of that valve is ideally like so. And then at this point is the thermostat that controls this valve, 24 VAC valve, uh, says it needs heat, it's going to push down and the flow instead of a returning, simply returning, is going to flow into the heating coil. And then about 
heating water. This is a 50 plate heat exchanger. It's quite large. Uh, again, one inch PEX 5 volt glycol. And then you'll notice I do have a circulating pump. The reason for that is that the water heater is very far away from the uh, uh, further bathroom. So I've got three zones. So hot water coming out, being pumped and pushed into the devices. And then I've got three returns from three different locations. So wherever you open the faucet in the house, within three seconds, you get very, very warm water right away. Uh, on its return, there's a check valve, making sure it's a one-way flow. And this is where it gets complicated. I have this mixing valve that is going to mix on the cold side. What I consider the cold side is the return from the house on here. It's not that cold actually, it's maybe almost up to the right temperature. And this is the hot side. Hot side means it's water that had come from the um, heat plate exchanger, which is 180. On this side, you can barely hold it with gloves. Uh, and on this side, it's 135 Fahrenheit, which is the household hot water. So it's going to take only that if, and only if the water is uh, up to temperature. If it's a bit colder, for whatever reason, is going to mix in some hot water while using that pump to feed that valve. And then the magics happen where you see this is the cold intake. So cold water comes first into that to preheat and heat the water to 180 coming out and feeding this valve. So whenever we open a faucet, it's going to combine a bit of a re return and uh, most of the return and a bit of it. So you might wonder if there's uh, already good temperature, but it's going to mix cold water in it as well. So it's very important that uh, I have that mixing valve in the use because I don't want any water to flow in the house beyond 135 or 140 for a night, which is quite hot by the way. And then I do want the household water to be heated by the glycol first. For now, this water heater is being turned off. It's only holding hot water. And since I have the circulating pump, it's circulating but it's going to add only very hot water if and only if it's needed. So never ever am I going to have water beyond 140 Fahrenheit, which is the set temperature for that. And then uh, it's for testing purposes that I put that breaker off, I'll switch it on. So whenever uh, the boiler turns off and whatever, it's going to heat electric as usual. So voila, this concludes the video on how this machine works with its uh, specificities. What else would I do differently? Uh, would I have uh, spent so much time to feed the garage back there? No, uh, I don't think I'm going to regain any money from that. As for the house, I'm very happy, very pleased about that. I can heat the whole house, no problem. It's meant for 18,000 square feet, by the way. So it's uh, maybe uh, when you feed that constantly throughout the day. My goal was to feed that only on the day until we get uh, very, uh, very, very cold weather. Until now, I'm feeding it uh, every day or so. And it's uh, running uh, perfectly. Having hot water supply throughout the house is very good. Especially uh, recently, we had the power outage two days. We never missed hot water, you know. And running a hot water tank on a generator is not that good, especially if the, the, the generator is uh, small and it's costly on gasoline or diesel.
and then uh, also the uh, house garage needs to have its own source of heating so now I do have uh, the glycol heating in the garage which is good because uh, the side-by-side -side is always in the house garage always <laughs> no vehicle other than this one is going inside and each every time I come back from logging or whatever with the side-by-side -side, it's cold full of ice snow and it takes a lot of energy to melt this down but I'm always but I'm always happy to start a fresh day on a warm machine that start right up one more thing I had to share so I had one clever guy asking me so you're selling firewood right yes how much do you sell it so delivered or not delivered depends but it's uh, over three hundred dollar a cord full cord or a hundred and five dollar uh, you know the uh, 16 inches uh, stove wood and he says you're going to feed that machine with that kind of wood <laughs> no of course so the idea for this machine is to burn all the uh, unwanted wood which is a uh, small uh, pole wood soft wood rotted wood you name it so that's to burn the unsellable wood and uh, on the other side I can ask a better price also for the wood I'm splitting because it's just premium firewood all split no rot no bent no nuts no whatever it's just perfect small firewood for people that are not heating much they are just using that in their small nice fireplace in the house so that's why they, uh, they, they want to pay a premium for that it's very clean so well I was about to forget one important thing I have to heat and it's not happening in winter this is the in ground pool so it's going to be equipped to be heated with using wood <laughs> was on the whitelist so that's pretty much about it for this machine hope you enjoyed this video and it answered the question why I'm heating with that first because I like that and second because there are some uh, good benefits on that am I going to have a return on the investment on that maybe in 20 years who knows See you in the next one. Thanks.